robotics, research, environment, places, and ecology, mathematics, food corner, Do you know that mathematics is fun and amazing? I'm so glad that you're here today to join me for the new episode of Mathematics in the Modern World. Our today's episode is about Fibonacci Sequence. Fibonacci Sequence is a series of numbers from 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on and so on. Number 2 is found by adding the 2 number before it. That is 1 plus 1. The 3 is found by adding 1 and 2. That's before the number. The 5 is found by adding 3 and 2. And the other numbers is found by adding the previous two numbers. It is a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. It is the sequence of f sub 1, f sub 2, f sub 3, f sub 4, and so on and so forth until f sub n. Sometimes it is named as x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, until it reaches x sub n. The f sub 1 and f sub 2 are the first two terms with equal, which is equal to 1. And these satisfy the formula of the Fibonacci sequence. Now, let's discuss the rabbit habit. As you can see on the table, we have here the rabbit habit. The first month have only one pair adult rabbit. On the second month, we still have one adult rabbit. But on the third month, we have two adult paired rabbit. On the, on the fourth month, we have three adult pair rabbit. On the fifth month, we have five adult pair rabbit. On the next table, we have growth of rabbit colony. As you can see on the next figure, we have the growth of the rabbit colony. On the first column, we have the month. The second column, we have the adult pair. The third column is the young pair. And the fourth is the total of the rabbits, the paired rabbit. We're going to notice, guys, on the first month, we have one adult pair rabbit and one young rabbit. So we simply add one adult pair, one adult pair rabbit and one young rabbit paired rabbit. So we have two. On the second month, we have two adult paired rabbit. On the, on the young paired rabbit, we have one. So we add two plus one, it's three. Okay. On the fourth month of colony, we have five adult rabbit and three young paired rabbit. So we add that, and then we got eight rabbits. Eight paired rabbits. So the process will continue then. So there is an adult and young until we reach 377 paired rabbit. There are many samples of Fibonacci sequence. Let's just have some very basic example that we're going to tackle today. We have flower petals. 
Spiral on sunflower seeds. A spiral on pineapple. The pine cone. During ancient time and Renaissance time or period, we already have divine proportion. That's why we're studying it today. They called it also as golden ratio. Let me read you the definition of it. This contains the drawing of the five platonic solids and it was probably the Vinci who first called it as section urea. It's a Latin word which means golden section. What is the golden ratio all about? This, this spiral ratio. It is started with a very small square with a value of 1 and followed by another square with 1 also. And then connected with 2. So we have 1, 1, Two, and then followed by three so then followed by five then followed by eight and then 13 so it rotates like this spiral okay so they call it also as golden ratio the spiral so that is the golden ratio and what is golden ratio all about? It is the relationship between numbers on the Fibonacci sequence. We're the plotting the relationship. So meaning we plot the relationship from 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay? That's the scale result in the spiral shape. We're going to notice that's on the spiral shape. Okay? We're going to repeat it. We, we have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, uh, 13, okay, so, and so on and so forth. Golden ratio can be identified by simply having a, a straight line, which is divided into two. The bigger part is the line A, and then the smaller part is the line B. We're going to add it, that's A plus B, and that is one of the proof of the golden ratio. Another thing is the formula. Here is the formula for the golden ratio. Okay, so we have A plus B over A. Then it is equal to A over B. We're going to solve for it. A pro, uh, the value would be 1.618034. If the value of all your data is closer to it, then automatically it is, also, it is included in the golden ratio. Some of our scientists and sculptors and painters use the golden ratio and it was it was already proven by different uh, different field. In fact, I will show you later the different architectures, the different designs, the different uh, painter paintings on the presence with the presence of golden ratio aside from the golden ratio we have golden rectangle the golden star the golden pentagram now let's go over to the golden rectangle the golden rectangle is known as one of the most virtual satisfying geometric form. we also have a relationship of it to the golden spirals in fact the golden spirals 
is something to do with golden rectangle also. That's why some of the ge geometrists and mathematicians make an intertwist on uh, golden spiral and golden rectangle because most of our painting and architectures or design have similarities on rectangle golden rectangle and the golden spiral you know guys that in spiral we also use square but in a motion of a circle or a spiral in shape so you start with one one two three five but here in a golden rectangle or golden rectangle it's just like with that but it is presented in rectangle here is the rectangle okay so as you can see on the board it started with one and end with 34. it's just like with the spiral look at it so that's the spiral so let's have the spiral and the rectangle. So they are almost the same. Now let's have just an, let's have an example of golden ratio in nature. Let's start with the horn of the ram. The eye of the moth. The body section of the ant and some insects. We also have pictures of animals like tigers, fish, the penguin, the dolphin, and etc. We also have seashells. We also have the pattern of the tree. The pattern of the tree. See that? We have one, one, two, and then three. The human face. I did not use my face here. Then the DNA. Of course, the DNA. According to Mark Barr, Pages already used the golden ratio during his time. In fact, the proof of it is the dimension of a uh, Parthenon. So this is the Parthenon. Okay. So as you can see, there is a uh, computation for the golden ratio on the Parthenon. Aside from Pejas, we also have Tema, Temaius or Plato. Plato described the five possible regular solid that relates to the golden ratio. And these are the five solid, regular solids. The first one is the tetrahedron, the cube, octahedron, I icosahedron dodecahedron so these are the five solid regular uh, regular solid so these are the regular solid that involves in golden ratio or relates in the golden ratio So, aside from Plato, we have Euclid. Euclid is also a mathematician. 
Euclid defined the golden ratio in his time. He defined ratio as a dividing line in the stream. And he used his book, The Element. He proved the link of number in the construction of the pentagram, meaning he constructed the pentagram. Euclid. The intersection of the other edges to another edges is the golden ratio in the pentagram. The length of the shorter segment to the segment bound by the two intersecting lines is golden ratio. The length of the shorter segment to the segment bound by the two intersecting line is golden ratio. Now let's go to Leonardo da Vinci, his golden ratio arts. He uses golden he uses painting or Leonardo da Vinci used golden ratio in his painting. The most popular one is the Vitruvian Man. As you can see, on the Vitruvian Man, we have the golden rectangle. The next one is the Last Supper. By the way, guys, the Last Supper, this is the Last Supper of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. We also have another Last Supper done by another author or another uh, sign, another art, artist or painter. We also have the Mona Lisa. So the eyes, the face of Mona Lisa, and the total package of Mona Lisa who have golden ratio. And if you see the smile of Mona Lisa during your visit to her, her you will be surprised and you will be lucky according to the story. And then we have the Saint Jerome in the wilderness. The Saint Jerome in the wilderness have golden ratio also. In fact, there are different scenario of Saint Jerome in the wilderness. But I just use this one only. So as you can see, there is a there is a square, a rectangle already on the picture so that you will see how the golden ratio is imposed or in, uh, used in the painting. Another popular Sa art artist is Michelangelo. Do you know his real name? His real name is Michelangelo di Lodovico, uh, Lodovico Simon. Again, Michelangelo di Lodovico Simon. Uh, Michelangelo is the greatest uh, artist during his time or the great living artist during his time. The most popular painting that was drawn by Michelangelo was the creation of Adam. So the finger of God and the finger of Adam connected. So he used the golden ratio in the golden triangle or rectangle rather. So here is the drawing of uh, the creation of man. Or Adam. As you can see on the board, there is a rectangle, and then the the uh, God and the man have connection on their finger. The another one is the Holy Family here. So we have the Holy Family. So these two are the very popular painting of Michelangelo during his time. But of course. 
Michelangelo have many paintings. Only these two are uh, the trending during his time. Meaning trending, you know? It is the common term today is trending, the trending painting. The next famous artist during their time is Raphael. So we have Michelangelo and then Raphael. So the real name of Raphael is Raphael San Sancho da Urbino. So his popular painting is the School of Athens. Okay. And then the Crucifixion. So here is the School of Athens. And then the crucifixion. Our next artist that is very popular during the ancient time, Renaissance time, is Sandro Botticelli. His real name is Alessandro Di Mariano Di Bani Pelipepi. He's uh, an artist or a painter, Italian painter, during the Renaissance period. He drew the birth of Venus. The birth of Venus in the navel have, have the golden ratio. Okay? He's also one of the great living artists during his time in Renaissance period. Uh, so here is the painting of Venus, the birth of Venus. And then we have the painting found in the Ufes, uh, U Ufesi. So this, I just got, got one only. This is the only one that I got from the gallery. So this is one of the gallery of, that found in Ufesi. Okay. Uh, by the way, the Ufesi can be found in Floris, uh, Florence, Italy. He's uh, an artist or a painter, Italian painter, during the Renaissance period. He drew the birth of Venus. The birth of Venus in the navel have, have the golden ratio. Okay. He's also one of the great living artists during his time in Renaissance period. Uh, so here is the painting of Venus, the birth of Venus. And then we have the painting found in the Ufes, uh, Ufesi. So this, I just got, got one only. This is the only one that I got from the gallery. So this is one of the gallery of, that found in Ufesi, okay? Uh, by the way, the Ufesi can be found in Floris, uh, Florence, Italy. Do you know, guys, that there is a post-impressionist painter? He's a French painter. His name was George Pierre Seurat. He had three famous paintings. We have the butters and uh, asiners. We have the bridge of the Corbidu, Cor, Corbil, Corbure. <laughs> we have the Corbure. Again, bridge of Cor, Corbigure. The bridge of Corbigure. A Sunday on La Grande Latte. A Sunday on La Grande Tejate. Another artist or painter is Salvador Dali. His real name is Salvador Domingo Felipe Jacinto Dali. <laughs> so then, uh, the most popular one that he paint is the sacraments of the last supper so here is the sacrament of the last supper 
So as you can see, there's still a golden rectangle. So he used, or Danny used the golden rectangle during his painting. Now let's go to the Great Pyramid in Giza. It was built in 1400s BC and it can be found in Ames uh, Papyrus of Egypt. Do you know guys that the length of the pyramid is 756 feet and the height of it is 481. We are going to compute the ratio of this base. The height is 1.517, meaning it is closer to the golden ratio value 1.6. So that's why the Great Pyramid is also included in the architectural design with golden ratio. Now, let's go to Notre Dame. The Notre Dame is a Gothic cathedral in Paris. And it was built between 1163 and 1250. It appears to be a golden ratio with an, a key proportion of the design. So the design is calculated with a golden ratio, meaning they use a golden ratio in the design of a Notre Dame. Another one is the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal can be found in India. This is the Taj Mahal. It used the golden ratio in the construction and completed in 1648. So they used the golden ratio in building the Taj Mahal. The order and proportion of the arches, the arc, was in golden ratio also. Another one is the Chartes Cathedral. The Chartes Cathedral exhibit the golden ratio also. If you're going to notice there is a golden ratio or a rectangular in shape there. We also have the United Nations building. The window configure reveal golden proportion. So here is the United Nations building. And of course, we also have the Eiffel Tower, one of my ambition tower to be seen in the planet Earth. So it is located in Paris, Paris, France. It was named by the name Alexander Gustave I feel who designed the uh, who designed and built the tower. He's the one who designed and built the tower. The CN Tower. The CN Tower is located in Toronto, Canada. It is the largest tower and freestanding structure in the world. Okay? It contains a golden ratio design. It's very authentic. You will see the, 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 the picture. So here's the picture. The ratio of the observation of the deck is 342 meters with a total height of 553.33. So if we're going to calculate it, that would be the, the reverse of the pi value. 0. 0 0.618 the reciprocal of the pi that's the reciprocal of the pi meaning it is also go a golden ratio so guys that's all for today i hope you learn a lot from the different architectural designs painting and some of the natures that can be seen or have golden ratio imagine we have animals, insects, and plants 
who have a golden ratio. Aside from it, there are different paintings. There are different architectural designs who are influences by the golden ratio. So guys, that's it. I hope you learned a lot from it. I hope to see you for the next episode. So if you like our video and you learn a lot from it, don't forget to press thumb or to click the thumb mark. And don't forget to subscribe so that you will be always you will always be notified if there is a new episode in mathematics in the modern world. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for your time. God bless. Bye-bye.